Owl Farm has been part of St Peter's School, Cambridge, since the 1930s. In 2014, it was developed as a demonstration farm for the Waikato region. It's now showcasing the latest in commercial dairy farming practices, as well as encouraging young people into the primary sector. Our farm was set up as a joint venture between Lincoln University and St Peter's School here in Cambridge. And the idea with our farm was to provide a demonstration farm that had two clear objectives. One was to create a commercial viable dairy farm that was then able to become an exemplar in all things uh, about production, profit, animal wellbeing, quality workplace. And the other part of it was to provide an opportunity where students would engage in learning on farm, uh, both through agriculture but also through other subjects that they do at, at St Peter's and other schools, and uh, find a career or pathway through to primary industries. So the idea is just to pick off any leaves that are right in front of this fruiting zone. We have ag and science and hort teachers, of which there are three this year, who are able to take the students out whenever they need to, to create relative learning opportunities to their curriculum area. Also we have the opportunity for all the other teachers to bring students out when they're hosted by myself or by Tom Buckley, who's the farm manager here, and we're able to take them on a supervised or a guided uh, tour or um, practical session that's out on the farm. Looking good. We collect quite a lot of data and that means that we can contribute to a lot of other projects which need regular, reliable data. So in particular on our farm at the moment, we have an edicovariance tower which has been used by Waikato University and they are looking at carbon dioxide emissions through a crop cycle. So we have crops on farm and we're collecting data from all these paddocks so it makes sense that we would be able to contribute to their project. They in turn are able to help support some of the learning of the students on the farm and so it becomes a win-win opportunity for everybody involved. At our farm we are tasked with using proven research and good on-farm practice to get the best outcome. We want to be a world leader in achieving environmental outcomes, quality workplace and animal wellbeing outcomes. And we need to make sure that we have a profitable, healthy business as well as we do that. I mean, decisions made very early on have an effect later oh, on. So. Yeah. One of the unique features of our farm is the wagon wheel approach. And the wagon wheel approach allows us to consider the impact on any decision on all aspects that are required to run a successful business. So if we are looking at a farm performance change, we have to consider what will be the impact on animal welfare, what will be the impact on our quality workplace, the hours worked, the type of work, the safety of our team on farm. We have to look at our environmental outcomes. Will it increase our biological greenhouse gases? What does it do to nitrogen in our system? We have to look at our financial performance. So all these things, and how will the community perceive us if we start to make that change? The wagon wheel KPIs allow us to have a really robust discussion at a farm management level about any decision or any change we're making within our business. And we have to push towards all of these at any one time. One of the big things we've been measuring is biological greenhouse gases. And over the last five years, we've decreased those by about 12%. Along the way, we've actually improved our profitability and we've actually achieved a lot of our wagon wheel KPIs. When we are making decisions, we are using data through Overseer, we're using modelling through PharmAx to enable us to make the right decisions. And that has actually allowed us to continue to grow and evolve the system to ensure that we are going to be future ready. We look to science to see what's been proven out in the field. Milking frequency is one of those things that has been really challenging to create quality workplaces and more and more research is showing that alternative milking strategies are suitable for cows and for people and don't have big detrimental impacts on production and profitability outcomes. We start the season at our farm milking twice a day and then when mating is finished we transition to a 3 and 2 milking. That means we milk at 5am in the morning and 6pm at night and then the next day we milk at 11am and then that repeats. The latest information from DairyNZ shows that less than 50% of people still milk traditionally twice a day all year. So we know it's a real and relevant topic for our farming community and so we want to demonstrate how it can be used in practice, particularly when you're feeding crops, uh, how to make that work and then how do we also maintain production and profitability while we're doing it. We have a wetland area here which uh, has been operating for the last four years and we've been really lucky to have Niwa collecting the results from it. 
We've got a catchment area of about seven hectares which is feeding into this wetland and we're able to see that 63% of the nitrates are being removed through this process of this wetland here. There's also sweet corn being grown here and we've also got Christmas trees which are grown by the St Peter's students. They came to us with a proposal to lease an area of land that was going to be a bit marginal for us to graze and they were able to put through the costings of being able to plant, maintain and harvest that area and uh, develop some really great learning about how a business project works in a farm based environment. One of the strengths of our farm is our access to our partners. They bring technical expertise, they bring the most up-to-date processes, resources and best practice management on farm. So we have representatives from our partners on our farm, which is in no particular order, is, is Balance, PGG Wrightsons, Westpac, Dairy NZ, Lincoln University and Fonterra Farm Source. So we have a very, very good committee in that uh, we have I guess experts in their own fields plus a, a farmer cohort that then really looks at what we're trying to do and has the wisdom and experience to know actually how do we actually make this work in a practical sense. So we're going to have a look at what's happening under the soil here at the moment. The objectives of our farm I think are, are being well met. Uh, I break it down into two parts. Um, one is our physical performance, so you know, our farm is performing very well in terms of uh, efficiency of pasture use uh, against the grass curve. The second part is the providing knowledge part. I think it's doing a very good job in terms of communicating with farmers via the various means, either focus days or through digital. I think the other area of real strength is where our farm plays a role in the wider, wider industry, and that is the education side of it. So whether it be students from uh, St Peter's College or students from further afield or various groups that are hosted on our farm, uh, I think it's playing a really good role in terms of you know, stimulating uh, interest uh, both behind and beyond the farm gate, which I think is a real positive for the industry.